Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, uh, in another video in our series of videos on set theory, uh, is going to deal with uh, sets, non-finite size sets and more importantly uh, sets that are infinite in size and we're going to try to define these sets as either being countable or uncountable. Okay, uh, so let's just relist our sets or our important sets. Okay, our important sets. Okay, uh, we have the natural numbers n uh, is the set of numbers of the form 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Okay, we have the integers is a set of numbers expands to, in, to negative infinity, let's say minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so it's the it's the negative integers. Uh, let's say we have the rationals, Q. Okay, the rationals are the set of fractions. So the set of A's over B's, such that uh, A and B are elements of Z, with a restriction that B cannot be equal to zero because zero is undefined, okay? Uh, and then we have the set of irrational numbers. Let's say the irrational numbers, okay? Let's say I subscript R is a set of numbers such as pi, the square root of two, E, and so on and so forth. And then we have the set of real numbers, the reals, which is, I suppose, by definition, we're saying it is equal to the rationals, unioned with the irrational numbers. And then we have, I suppose, finally, the complex numbers. Okay. Uh, now, in the previous video, okay, we, sh we have shown uh, in a previous video uh, that the integers and the rationals are countable. Okay. Uh, what we mean by that is that we can create a bijection between the natural numbers and these particular sets. And in this video, what we want to show is we want to try to show, we want to show okay, that the real numbers, okay, the real number system, the real numbers, yeah, okay, are uncountable. Okay, okay, that they're uncountable. That means that we cannot list them, yeah, uh, as a list, okay, like the way we can list the natural numbers, we're unable to list the real numbers, uh, because if we could list them, we would have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the natural numbers and themselves, and by definition that would mean that the real numbers are countable. So what I want to try to show is that the real numbers are uncountable, okay? So, for for I suppose let's say for uh, brevity, okay. Uh, let's show, okay. Let's show, okay, that there that there is an uncountable, okay, number number of real numbers, of real numbers between between. Let's say for argument zero and one on the number line, okay, on the number line, okay. So if we can show that the numbers, that the real numbers between zero and one on the number line are uncountable, uh, well then what we've shown is that, no, there is, a, I suppose, a countable number of these particular intervals, okay, if we take them from the natural number perspective and that the distance between each one being an interval, okay, but we can show that the number of numbers in here are uncountable, well then what we'll have is, we'll have a countable, a countable amount of uncountable intervals, okay, uh, which will give us an uncountable overall measure. Okay, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to use diagonals. Uh, sorry, we're going to use Cantor's diagonalization technique. Okay, so we're going to use Cantor's okay, diagonal diagonalization. Okay, let's say his diagonalization uh, argument. Okay, okay. So if if the real numbers, okay. If the real numbers, so let's start this, okay? And what we're talking about, the real numbers between zero and one, okay? Uh, let's say between zero and one, okay? If the real numbers are countable, are countable, well then they can be listed, okay? That's important, okay? And maybe the first real number in the list is zero point, let's say, A11, A12, 
A13, A14, and so on and so forth. This is its decimal representation, okay? So it's zero point something, 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 something. And let's call that the first real number in this particular list, okay? Uh, the second real number, okay, we'll say the second real number is zero point A21, A22, A23, A24, and so on and so forth. And let's say that the third real number is zero point A31, A32, A33, a3, A34, and so on and so forth. So you see, I'm actually trying to list the real numbers here, okay? I'm saying that this is the first real number, the second, the third, and let's say we have the fourth real number, which is 0 0.A41, A42, A43, A44, and so on and so forth, okay? And I'm gonna continue in this fashion, okay? Trying to list the real numbers, okay? Where we associate each real number with one of our integers, okay? Sorry, one of our natural numbers, okay? And we know that the natural numbers by definition are countable. So here's each natural number being associated with a single real number, okay? So what we're trying to create here is we're trying to create a one-to-one -one, uh, and also an onto correspondence between the natural numbers and the real numbers. Okay? In other words, we are trying to we're trying to construct a bijection between the natural numbers and the real numbers. Okay? Uh, so if the real numbers can be listed, okay, okay, uh, well then all the real numbers should be somewhere on this list. So what Cantor's diagonalization argument attempts to do, or actually succeeds in doing, is creating, we're going to create, okay, a real number, okay, a real number, okay, that's not on the list, okay? So if we can create a real number that's not on the list, well then what we have is, and this is like based off, let's say, the pigeonhole principle, okay? We have each natural number on the list, by assumption, is, sorry, each natural is being associated with a real number, but we've created another number that's not on the list, okay? So we're shown that